you're going to learn seven tips for interrupting a long-winded communicator. I've done a few videos on interruptions over the past year, and I'll put links to those in the description below. And some of you requested the best way to interrupt other speakers when they are going on and on and won't let you get a word in. So the tips you'll learn will be to interrupt as politely as possible from your side of the conversation. But some of the tips will take getting used to if you're not normally an assertive communicator. So we'll practice the difficult tips together to get you used to it. Before I give you the tips, I have a warning. I recommend you abandon all hope of changing a long-winded person into a concise communicator. Your job is to interrupt as politely as you can. Don't attempt to manage them as a person. You will fail miserably. Just focus on managing yourself and managing the flow of the conversation. And if you're interested in how to adapt these tips for use on the phone, you'll have to do that adaptation yourself because I don't make videos about phone communication specifically. Here are the seven tips. And the seventh is the most assertive and might be the hardest one for you. So we'll build to that. And I'll give you two bonus tips about the worst way to handle a long-winded speaker. Tip number one is about your mindset. And the tip is this. Remember that interrupting somebody is not automatically considered a rude or offensive behavior, except that interruptions are just part of everyday conversation. Sometimes there are good reasons to interrupt somebody, and we'll talk more about that. But interruptions are very common. I've read, for example, that people interrupt each other about once per minute in normal back and forth conversation. So don't feel too badly about interrupting a long-winded speaker. Tip number two, some interruptions are not interruptions. This is the longest and most educational tip of the video, but it'll help you see interruptions in a new light. Sometimes we mistake similar behaviors for interruptions. A traditional view of the word interruption would be to cut somebody off or not let somebody finish what they are saying. So in contrast, many conversations involve what's more accurately described as overlapping talk. Some people consider any overlapping talk as an interruption, but that is an unhelpful point of view. Most overlapping talk is not really an interruption in terms of the way it influences the flow of the conversation. Overlapping talk happens when both people begin speaking at almost the same moment, and it's hard to tell if an interruption happened or if two people just spoke simultaneously. This happens all of the time on Zoom and other phone calls, because the technology causes a little delay. And it's hard to know when somebody has finished or is just pausing. And then the next speaker starts talking at about the same moment, the original speaker continued their talking turn after a pause. Now it's a good habit to speak up on the pause. That's a tip within a tip here. Speak up on the pause. But a pause doesn't always mean that the other person is done talking, and that results sometimes in overlapping talk. I used to work with somebody face-to-face -face who I got along with really well, but she took really long pauses during the middle of her talking turns. She was a deep thinker, a careful thinker, but when she paused like that, it sounded like her talking turn was 100% complete. So often I started to respond, and then she'd start talking again, and we'd have overlapping talk, so that I'd stop, wait for her to finish. I don't think it ever felt rude to her. We got along well, but I developed a habit of literally counting a full five seconds in my head before I spoke. I knew after five seconds, if she hadn't restarted, then her talking turn was over. There were numerous times, though, that I counted all the way to four seconds, and she would start talking again, so I was glad I developed that habit. So on Zoom or in conversation, we can just correct this really quickly by saying something like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Positive overlapping talk also happens when you are affirming what the other person is saying, essentially demonstrating agreement by finishing parts of what the other person's saying. And the other person might be jumping in because they're excited and they see things the same way as you. If you listen to comedy podcasts, for example, You'll notice lots of overlapping talk and laughing. Overlapping talk can be a sign of a collaborative spirit and a sign of a good connection. It would be a real stretch to label that type of overlapping talk as an interruption. All that to say, not all interruptions are interruptions. Now at the same time, be sure you don't have a habit of constantly jumping in, guessing what the other person is about to say, or stealing their ending. If it's repetitive and one-sided, it'll get annoying and be seen as an interruption. In contrast, positive overlapping talk is always mutual and about equal. 
So this is really about understanding the nature of interruptions and being able to distinguish that from normal overlapping talk. Tip three is that most long-winded speakers won't be hurt or offended at all if you politely interrupt them. And here's why. They probably know they are long-winded and have likely received feedback about it before. You can take comfort that you won't be the first person to signal this to them. As I mentioned, sometimes there are good reasons to interrupt. And one legitimate reason to interrupt is when the other person is monologuing and not giving you the opportunity to respond. Conversations are supposed to be two-way. Most long-winded speakers know who they are and will accept that it was okay for you to interrupt them. Tip number four, use I language anytime you are interrupting. This is also called an I statement. And I've done a few videos about this, including a video on assertive communication skills and verbal strategies to prevent people from interrupting you. I'm gonna give you some samples in a moment. You'll notice I'm not talking about how the other person won't shut up. I'm not pointing out that they are long-winded. I'm using I language to talk about what I need. You can wait for a brief pause or just jump into the middle of what they're saying if they're not pausing. So let's practice these samples out loud together. Say these with me. I'm sorry, I'm losing track. Can you boil it all the way down for me? Sorry to interrupt, I'm having trouble following. Can you give me the bottom line and then I'll respond? Please pardon my interruption. Let me see if I understand your point and then I'd like to give you my view. You can use my samples or you can put this in your own words. Just make sure you apply the same principles. And notice in your message, you're giving them the opportunity to wrap it up. You're not trying to stop their talking turn on a dime. So give them a moment to say another sentence or two and then repeat part of what you said to initiate your talking turn. Practice these samples with me where you'd jump back in after you've given them the opportunity to wrap it up. Okay, I got it. Now I'd like to give you my view or Makes sense, now I'll respond. It's important to signal your intention to speak next by using I statements because your intention to speak gives them a reason to stop talking. You have to advocate for space to talk when you're facing a long-winded speaker. Tip five, in addition to I language, I'm weaving in some general words of politeness. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Please pardon my interruption. Adding polite phrases like this is a nice touch and will help protect against any negative feelings that the other person might have. You don't have to apologize profusely. You haven't done anything wrong. Just add a dash of normal politeness to your interruption. Tip number six, if you combine these I statements and polite phrases with some nonverbal cues like holding up a finger and leaning forward, opening your mouth a little bit, then it should be clear to the other person that you are trying to speak. I cover the nonverbal side of these things in a full interview with Vanessa Van Edwards that I will link to below. A short version of these tips is just to lift your finger, open your mouth a little bit, and lean forward. That, along with your words, will send the unmistakable signal that you're going to talk and the other person should make room for you. Tip number seven, and we've built up to this one, if nothing else has worked, then you have to use an even more assertive approach. You have to start talking while the other person is still talking. The key is to do this with a completely neutral tone. No negativity whatsoever in your attitude. Once it's clear that they're not gonna stop without a direct interruption, you just have to interrupt. And you'll warm it up in two stages. The first stage is where you start with a simple phrase or two and repeat it. Okay, I got it, got it, got it. Okay, I got it. The repetition will help interrupt their flow a little bit and clearly signal your desire to talk. So practice it out loud with me right now. Okay, I got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, I got it. And you might want to add some assertive head nodding as you say this. That will encourage most long-winded speakers to wrap it up and then you can talk. And you have to keep doing this until they get the hint sometimes. And that might sound pushy, or too assertive, and you have to practice it until it feels natural. But here's the truth. This is the way polite, assertive people interrupt long-winded speakers. And nobody will find fault in you if you do this naturally with no attitude, because everybody knows that the other person is long-winded anyway. If that still doesn't work at first, then the second stage is that you have to ask or state repeatedly your intention to talk. So let's pretend you've already been saying, okay, I got it, I got it, okay, I got it. 
Then stage two is to say out loud with me, I have something to say, I have something to say, I have something to say. Repetition is the key to interrupting their pattern. And you'll notice that I'm saying this with a brief pause in between. So if they're still talking, you repeat these statements and don't wait too long before saying it again. Here's another variation where you can ask it as a question. Practice it with me. Could I say something? Could I say something? Could I say something? Essentially, you have to just repeat one of these with brief pauses until the other person makes space for you in the conversation. Notice this is all still phrased with eye language. I'm also using what I would describe as a neutral tone. I'm not giving off any noticeable frustration or annoyed attitude. You should not, for example, use what people call a sing-songy tone of voice. Don't say it like this. I have something to say. I have something to say. Hmm. That will rub people the wrong way. Just state your desire to say something assertively and as matter-of-factly as you can. If you say it in a normal tone, it'll feel normal to them and they won't take it the wrong way. And I'm building up to this. I don't jump in after 30 seconds and start repeating these phrases. I try some of the other tips we've talked about here first and then I build to this if needed. And this is the most assertive approach I've ever had to use in my entire life when I've done it persistently. If you can use tip number seven, that's all the force you will likely ever need to use to prevent a long-winded speaker from continuing to dominate. And now for the two bonus tips. The number one worst thing you can do when a long-winded speaker is monologuing is to stay silent. Do not simply remain quiet or continue to listen passively when someone's monologuing. They will very likely interpret that as either good listening on your part or see it as a reason to keep talking because maybe they believe you still need convincing. If you keep listening, they will keep talking. In most cases, long-winded speakers are waiting for clear signals from you that you've heard them and now you have something to say. And the number two worst way to interrupt a long-winded speaker is just to completely interrupt them and cut them off mid-sentence. That will reflect badly on you and you'll be no better than the long-winded speaker. Instead, follow the tips we've talked about and signal your desire to talk. Give them the opportunity to wrap it up and then initiate your talking turn assertively. I hope that helps. Feel free to share your stories and thoughts about this in the comments section below and be sure to download the free PDF about the five essential communication skills that all professionals should have. Thanks, God bless, see you soon.